the Mount Zion service on today. We are excited about the Lord in this place. We may not be able to all gather together, so whether you're watching us from the comfort of your bed, your sofa, or at the dining table, or even in your car, we welcome you to our service on today. We can still give God glory. We can still give him praise. I thought about the prophet Habakkuk who said, if there's no animals in the barn, if there's no food in the kitchen, there will be a yet praise down on the inside. So we're going to yet praise him in the midst of what's going on in our nation and around the world. We won't let coronavirus stop us from giving God glory because he is yet sovereign. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you just for an opportunity to lift up your name, to give you glory, God, in the name of Jesus. For your word declares in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you which are in Christ Jesus. And Father, we thank you, God, that your word can yet go forth, that hearts can yet be healed, that bodies can be healed, God, that souls can be saved, that hearts can be uplifted and encouraged. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We pray for leaders everywhere, for your divine wisdom that comes from above. God, as we travel through this strange land, God, you're yet the sovereign one. So we look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith, knowing, God, that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. We pray for those that have already lost their lives, God. We pray for bereaved families everywhere. God, that you would be the comfort that they need. Now have your way in this place, God. Save souls, God. Renew hearts, God. Reclaim backsliders. And give us to know today as all over this nation, God, we're coming over the airways just to share your word in the name of Jesus. We give your name glory. We give you the praise. And we give you the honor. Now we'll read our scripture reading from the book of Psalms, First Division. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. For his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The are not so. But like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. All for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Let us join our praise team in worship at this time. Hallelujah. Come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. And tell your neighbor, or tell whoever's at the house with you, there is nothing that my God cannot do. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, God. We bless you. We magnify you and we give you the praise. Come on, everybody say, my God.
Lord, you have won the victory. Come on, give him the highest praise. Lord, you are the risen King. Death could not hold you down. God, you are the risen King. You're seated in majesty. Lord, you are the risen King. friend, 
someone you can call on and receive sound direction, sound counsel. After our praise team come forth, the next voice that you will hear will be that of Pastor Christy Kanyas, our praise team. Hallelujah. God will take care of you. There's nothing that's too hard for God. He will take care of you.
and God, we give you glory in this place on today because you are so worthy to be praised. For those of you that are in the building, amen, we won't forget about you on this morning. And for those of you tuning in on live, I challenge you now, even in the comfort of your own homes, just to lift your hands. Come on, wave them back and forth and tell God thank you and tell him how much you appreciate him right where you are. It could be a little different for you, but it's nothing like giving God praise in the midst of our circumstances that we can yet have a praise on the inside to tell God just how good he is and how grateful we are for his presence. Let us pray, Father in heaven, we are so thankful and so grateful, God, on this morning, wherever we may have gathered, Father, knowing that the church, God, really resides on the inside, that we, God, have the platform that we can yet spread this precious gospel. Father, we look forward for the testimony and the reports of how good, God, that you've been even in the midst of chaos and in the midst of uncertain times. Father, strengthen me now. God, give me, God, a fresh anointing to preach your word, God, to your people on this morning. Father, for a time such as this. And we bless and we praise you and we give you thanks. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen again in the absence of our senior pastor to our assistant pastor, First Lady Jackson. We are grateful to be in the building. I honor God for my husband who is working the security this morning. Amen. On the doors outside and for all the saints that have gathered here in the physical building. And those that are watching at home, we bless God for all of you. As First Lady Jackson leaned over and said, this was quite different this morning. First Lady Jackson, I agree that we are in a different space, in a different place. But even as I rose on this morning, the Lord reminded me of when I was in the fourth grade and me and a friend of mine would go in the room and we would line teddy bears up on the bed and we would line the Barbie dolls and the kids up on the bed and pull their cars up to the church and we would preach the inanimate objects. And I said, God, in all your wisdom, you always prepare us for what we need. And I mean, we would preach the floor down. We would preach the house down, even though the Barbies and the kids could not respond because they didn't have breath in their body. But I challenge you on today, those of you that have breath, it's only because God has given it to you. So as strange and different as this may be, I believe I'm prepared for the moment. I preached to two people before like it was a thousand. And so today does not bother me because the scripture reminds us that where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of us also. But there is a word from the Lord on this morning. If you would direct your attention to Psalms 46. Psalms 46 in its entirety. Beginning at verse number one. And it reads, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear... Though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, that desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth, he breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. I have read for you Psalms chapter number 46 in its entirety. From the subject today, be still and know. 
Be still and know. When this time came for the preaching moment on this morning, the Lord reminded me at how fragile the task at hand is on today. And he also gave a word that there would be many in pulpits that have already been established and pulpits that will be erected because of the crisis that many will be uh, poisoned with spiritual food from listening to too many voices in this season. He also said that we have to be careful that the only thing we speak in this hour is only what God has instructed us to do. And I said, God, where are all the pulpits popping up from? Why has everybody seemed to have a need to now come up with their own agenda and, and portray or even try to create what it is that you are calling us to in this moment? And so that I would not miss a precious moment and I would be very careful. I was not going to make up a scripture. I wasn't going to look at the reputable preachers on Facebook or on their church pages to see what they were saying. But instead waited on a clear word from God that I would hear exactly what would need to go out to his people on today. He took me to the number 10 early this morning and said that it was a symbol of authority of God and his government on earth, his responsibility, his law, and his completeness. Obedience and responsibility are symbolic of people toward God's law. And although the law has now been mandated right here in Hinesville that we can't gather with no more than 10 people, I believe just by man's law they said what they said. But I said, God, what are you saying? And when he showed me that it was the very authority of himself and his government on earth, I could say Selah as the scripture. I could pause and think on that and say, God, what are you saying to us in this hour? And going back to why everybody has now have to have something to say, he said it's anxiety. Anxiety has now kicked in and everybody has got to say something. And anxiety causes us to be wordy because it causes our thoughts to be all over the place. Many have tempted to speak out of turn or the flesh to be in the number just to have something to say. Anxiety is defined as the apprehensive uneasiness or nervousness, usually over an impending or anticipated misfortune. It is an emotion characterized by feelings of tension, worried thoughts, irritability, sleeplessness, and even physiological changes such as increased blood pressure and heart rate. It is estimated that 40 million Americans suffer from anxiety. That means about one in 13 people suffer from this disorder. And now in the midst of a crisis and uncertainty, I'm sure the numbers have gone up and have skyrocketed. But there are some practical ways, my brothers and sisters, that I want to encourage you to reduce some of your worry and to reduce some of your anxiety. Find a few sources you trust and stick with them. Even though we're on social media this morning, some of you are looking to some sources and if you look too much, you're going to find too much information because we've got a bunch of doctors that have come since this epidemic. People that hold no degree and no experience telling you exactly what the outcome is going to be. And if you listen to too much of that, it can cause your anxiety to strike. Limit the frequency of your updates. We don't need our phones in our hands all the day long. You can check in, get an update, and then be still and know. Know when to walk away. You gotta know when enough is enough. Practice social media self-discipline and think outside of yourself and help someone else. That's one of the things that we can do to ease some of the anxiety, taking the attention off of ourselves and going and helping someone else. Now you may be saying in the comfort of your homes or even in the sanctuary on today that none of this why he describes me. I'm good. I have remained anchored in faith. I have not become excessively worried and concerned because God is with me. Well, I beg to differ because when I look in the grocery store and on the shelves, we have no products such as toilet tissue. This epidemic has caused us to move into panic and to operate 
in ways that we would not have operated before. And truth be told, toilet tissue, Sister Reese, has no antibiotic properties. It has no healing properties, but yet we find the shells have none. And anxiety has kicked in amongst the people, both of God and non-believers, and has caused what we call panic buying. And has caused fear and has created a ripple effect. Because we are creatures that look to one another to see how we should function in society. And when we look to one another, we see, well, so-and-so is buying a whole bunch of toilet tissue over there. I might want to join in and get me some, too, without reason. We don't even know why we move the way we do sometimes. But I came to give you good news on this morning that people are looking to us, the body of believers, on how to behave on how to respond when crisis hits our front door. Psalm 46, again, the number 10 shows in the 10th verse, be still and know so that others around you can see how to handle yourself in the midst of a crisis. Come on, tell your neighbor at home if you sit beside them or even if you're watching, text somebody this morning and say, be still and know. We can take precaution without panic, this is not a declaration when the scripture says to be still and know to just sit there and do nothing. But rather it is a command to settle your spirit, settle your mind, settle your thoughts, and relinquish the need to be in control. But what I'm thankful for most on this morning is that none of this caught God by surprise. That we have a God that is omniscient and he knew before time that these perils would come. But the antidote for this anxiety is found in his word and it will strengthen us while we are in the way. And I'm grateful on this morning that I could walk through scripture and find encouragement on how to handle myself during the wait. Philippians chapter 4, 6 through 8 says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests may be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Second Timothy 1 and 7 reads, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. John 14 and 1 says, don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Joshua 1 and 9 says, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Matthew 6 and 27 says, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Psalms 94 and 19 says, when anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. Psalms 55 and 22 says, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. And one of my favorites, Romans 8 and 38 through 39, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, neither angels nor principalities, nor things present or things to come, nor height nor death, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. And I'm so glad on this morning that Paul included any other creature because we didn't see COVID-19 coming, but the scripture covered it all when he said any other creature or any other created thing that would find itself in the earth, that it would not be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. God knew all before this would come. And we can find hope and anchor ourselves, my God, in his word that tells us be still and know that I am God. My God, even during these times, 
My brothers and sisters, isn't it amazing, Sister Gypsy, that nothing seems too strange anymore. People that discarded anointing oil and called it a myth and a hoax now find themselves calling the elders of the church saying, where is the oil? Do you have some of that oil? And they are rubbing on their heads and they're rubbing and anointing their children and they are rubbing their doorposts so that no danger comes now that they're dwelling. Isn't it strange that now when the Israelites smeared blood over the doorposts so that the death angel would pass over, people read that and said, nah, that's not true. But God has brought us to a time but we have to go back to what the word of God says. And now some of us are practicing the very thing that we said didn't make sense in the beginning. It doesn't seem strange anymore to fast every day so that the bands of wickedness over the land can be broken. It doesn't seem strange to give ourselves lock-ins and pray and shut ourselves in that this epidemic would pass over us. It doesn't seem strange to take natural remedies to boost our immune systems, to go back to what grandmama and them used to do way back then. What was once considered doing too much has now been adopted by those that proclaim the name of Jesus Christ and even those that don't. Now nothing seems to be too strange, but God has a way of fulfilling his scripture. He said every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that I am Lord. We only have one duty and that is to be still and to know that he is God. From the top of government, even the president of the United States has come to a place and said, if we're going to get through this, we're going to need some prayers to go forth. And we're going to need the church to come together to get us through this one. We can't neglect small beginnings and we can't neglect the places where we find ourselves just because we're in the midst of a crisis, we have to go back to the foundation, to the very beginning, when God laid it out for us, that we would be able to do what was necessary, that we would be able to shake off the fear and the anxiety, that we would be able to go forth and be still, my brothers and sisters, and know that he is God. I feel my help coming on, even in the midst of an empty sanctuary because I know that there's some things that I can cling to. There's some hope that I have that rests in me as a believer. Yes, I'm concerned about my family. I'm concerned about the safety of this nation. I'm concerned about the safety of the community. But one thing I shall not do is bunker down in fear. I shall not tuck my tail and run and hide because I have a savior that is able to keep us from falling and to keep us safe. There is a secret place. My God, that I can hide myself in the midst of a confusing world. That I can go and I can plead the blood of Jesus. That the same blood that was shed on Calvary would be able to come now and help. It was the blood that was shed that keeps us from all infirmity. That keeps us from disease. That keeps us from sickness. So then why fear? Why go and hide? Why cower down? situation when we have a certain God that has given us a clear and direct declaration in 46 and 10 to say be still and know my God that I am God that there is none besides me this blessing in this pandemic Come on now. that we find ourselves in has caused us to know who God really is and if nothing else for that, I am so grateful. If you thought by chance, I got enough money, I can get through this. God said, now nah, I'm going to shut down all your big corporations. I'll cause the stock, the stock market to plummet. It's not in your finances. If by chance you thought it was, my education will get me through this because I've got my degrees and my bachelor's and my master's and my doctorate. He said, if you think it's your education, I'll shut down all your schools from pre-K to the highest level of higher learning. And you'll find that it's not your education. If you thought it was your lifestyle, he said, okay, I'll close all the restaurants. I'll close the arenas. I'll close the venues and the bars. I'll even shut down your sororities and your fraternities. Ain't nobody meeting up. If you thought it was your social circle, he said, I'll reduce the number 
to 10 and say, you're not going to meet up no more. If you thought it was your religion, he said, I'll shut the doors of the church. Let's see how much tradition and religion is going to do for you in this season. And I believe that God did it all, that we would be able to do something different. There was gypsy no more having to beg nobody to praise this morning because we had to do it on our own. There was no more me getting up here trying to convince somebody about the goodness of Jesus. Either I was going to preach this message like I'm preaching to thousands or sit myself at home. God has called us out to a different thing. My brothers and sisters, well, we have to do something different to get a different response from him. He said, simply be still and know. We know where the power is, and it's in the name of Jesus. So we have no reason to fear. I believe when this song was written, it was written in a critical time. It was written in a time of crisis and a time of uncertainty. And that's why he could proclaim that God is my refuge. He is a safe place and my strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. We don't need God far off with where we are now, my brothers and sisters, but we need him to come in and we need him to move now on our behalf. And whenever God sends a word, First Lady Jackson, he always sends witnesses. And I said, God, give me some witnesses in your word that were at peace because the opposite of anxiety is peace. Just to settle yourself. I said, who in the scriptures had peace in the midst of turmoil? And he said, go look at Peter. Remember when Peter was in prison and he was bound with two chains between two soldiers. The scripture says that even though Peter was in this circumstance, that Peter, first lady, was sleeping. He said, go on, look at Jacob. When Jacob was sent away by his father because they were struggling over the birthright, Jacob fell asleep in an open space in his head was asleep upon a stone. Even when the storm was raging on the sea, Jesus, remember, was found asleep in the bottom of the boat. And when Jonah was in his disobedience, even Jonah said, I'm gonna take a nap in the midst of what is going on. There is a peace that will cause you to rest in the midst of chaos. They say desperate times call for desperate measures. But we don't have to take that stance as believers because we have been given the instructions to be still and know. Everything around us is different and we are learning what is necessary and what we can do without. And so that brings me to a close on this morning and that one thing that we're gonna do is we will continue to exalt and we will continue to lift up the matchless name of Jesus. But for no other reason, we don't come in form and fashion. But we will give him glory and we will give him praise. Because I know that it's only by the hand of God that we're going to make it through this thing. I know that it's only by the hand of God that we'll get through it without being scathed. And one thing that brings me comfort is this. That even if the disease come nigh our dwelling, that we have a Savior that has already covered everything concerning us. That there still is a blood that we can call on that goes from the highest mountain to the lowest valley. The blood that we can call on for healing in the name of Jesus. That we can still call on Jehovah that heals us. That we don't have to walk around in fear. That we don't have to walk around in shame. And we don't have to walk around in condemnation. Either for those that have gathered today or for those that have chosen to shut it all down completely. We have been called to come to a place that we are going to embrace one another in this one. What I found out about this epidemic is it didn't care how rich you were. It didn't care what side of town you stayed on. Didn't care what color you are. I don't care what gender you this season, whoever you are, we are all put on an even playing ground. And all of us have been subject to what is happening in the earth. But I'm so glad when I look to the scripture and he says in the 11th verse, I will be exalted in the earth. So now we have come to a place when nobody knows where else to go. All they need to know is how to call on the name of Jesus. Now it doesn't seem strange when we can come down to the altar and we don't have words to say, sister.
a gypsy. And all we can do is say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And begin to call on his name, praying that he would inhabit the praises of his people. My God, I'm thankful on today for the blood that rests and the blood that was shed on Calvary. Can't you see our father going up Golgotha's hill on his way to be crucified? And in the back of his mind, I know he had to say, be still and know. Even during the most perilous times, I see him in the garden pleading with his father, take this cup from me. Can we do this thing another way? And his father saying, no, nah, my will has got to be complete. And Jesus saying, in the back of his head, be still and know that your father is God. Even when we, he was crucified and he was hung and the breath left his body, he had to have in the back of his mind, be still and know. So my brothers and my sisters on today, if I, Christ had to do it, if he had to make up in his mind, be still, and know that I am God. And I found that this was not a comforting message. That this be still was a rebuke to the nations because they were out of order. This be still was to gather yourself, surrender it, give it all to me and allow me to take my sovereign place, my rightful place in the kingdom. That where he is, we may be also. My brothers and sisters, the good news is, is it doesn't end like this. That there will be glory after this. I don't have to fear. Because this is just a transition. This is just a passing through. And the greater deal is that you have to be sure. In the midst not only of a crisis and a pandemic. That you know who your savior is. You know where your faith is anchored. And that you have a secure place in heaven. Because this earth. Although his kingdom is now being established. I believe this is not our resting place. And this is not how the story ends. That one day we're going to wake up. We're going to lift up our eyes somewhere. And prayerfully is to a Savior that loves us. To a Savior that has kept us. And to a Savior that died for all mankind. That we would be able to do what we do now. First Lady Jackson, it feels almost like underground church. Come on, come on. Come on. The same message I've been preaching about our brothers and sisters in China. And over in Ghana where they have to secretly do this. It feels like we have slipped away into a secret place. To be able to worship our God now. But wherever you find yourselves. Those of you that are streaming live. I pray that you have centered yourself in on this word. That you heard something from God in this season. That he is in the midst of establishing governmental order. That those that are calling on his name. And even those that don't believe. Will now line up to God's word. And begin to call out on his name. And to begin to praise him. Not for the stuff that he can give us but purely for who he is. Come on in your own homes. Begin to worship him and begin to give God glory. Come on, begin to thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his grace and thank him for his mercy. Come on, he's been a good God. He has kept our home safe. He's kept our family safe. And for that, we are so grateful and we are so thankful. God, we worship you in this place and we give you glory. God, because you've been so good to us. Father, we thank you and we honor you. And we give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and we give thanks. Amen, amen, and amen again. For those of you that have tuned in, we'd love to hear from you. Come on, type your responses in, and we'll be sure to go back after service and be able to operate and commune with you and conversate a little bit offline. But be encouraged in this season and know that God is who his word says he is. And because of that, we can be still and know that he is God. Find your place of safety. Find your place of refuge. Find a place where you can steal away and really bunker down and use this time to reconnect, to reestablish yourself, and to rejuvenate while we are in a place where we can get some rest. Amen, amen, and amen again. Amen, and there may be some viewers who are listening who don't know the Lord in the pardon of your sin. You still have that opportunity. You can confess the Lord Jesus as your Savior right in your own home. Or maybe you have felt some distance between you and God. Now is the time, as the preacher said, to make that reconnection. We're going to pray with you. If you have prayer requests, please make them known through our social media venue. 
and we will be praying with and for you. Father, we thank you and we praise you for a right now word, for encouragement just to stand still, to look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Father, we pray for those that are listening that may not have received your son as Savior. God, that even now that they would confess Jesus as Lord and they, that, that they will realize that he died for their sins and the sins of the entire world. God, that they will ask for your forgiveness and receive him yeah. as Lord and Savior. Father, those that are reestablishing their relationship with you. You said, God, that you're long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish. Father, we pray for the backsliding Thank right you. now in the name of Jesus. For those that have lost loved ones. For those that needed a word of encouragement. Just a reminder, God, that you're yet in control. In spite of what persecution, what oppositions, whatever trouble comes our way, God, you are yet God and God alone. We thank you and we praise you. Now be glorified even in the midst of this. Draw us near to you, God. And in the process of this, God teaches how to be there for one another, to love on one another, even if we have to do it from a distance, God. To be there, God, a help in the time of trouble. To encourage one another with a smile, God, or a word. But God, you be glorified in our lives. Because we believe if you do it right, God will bless it right. Go in peace, my brothers and sisters. We'll see you on Wednesday at Bible study.